Uh, time for an update video on this fine Wednesday evening, uh, July 10th, 2019, about 10, 19 p.m., 10, 20 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. And I tell you what, man, there's been a lot of activity occurring down here on the uh, Little Lake Fault Zone, so they claim. That's the name of that fault system where the 7.4 took place or 7.2 or 7.1 I'm sorry took place uh, just quite a few days ago uh, since then uh, we've had an enormous amount of earthquake activity taking place um, through the southern part of the state of California um, go ahead and pull up a couple maps here uh, for you guys and uh, we'll take a look at it If I can do this properly, it's just been one fun day, let me tell you. Okay, there we go. Had a little uh, issue going on there, but I think everything looks good now, so not a whole lot of activity right there, right? Well, we're looking at the one day magnitudes, right? So this is only one day, 2.5 and above. It does not look like a whole lot of activity, right? But let's see if you guys can see what I'm seeing here. I believe you can. Take a look at this uh, earthquake activity over here. 4.3, kind of towards the north there. It shows up as a blue dot. Um, that's pretty recent quake. Recent, really recent. Earlier this afternoon, we had a double four pointer. Uh, 4.5 right there towards the north. Another blue circle, very far north and also a 4.4 just to the south of that current or yeah just to the south of the other 4.5 uh, still well north of the main activity that's occurring down near Ridgecrest down here um, and prior to that we can go down a little bit more lots of threes lots of twos and uh, another 4.1 there within the same area well north um, and and this is kind of concerning folks this is really concerning to me um, and the reason why I'm stating that is because we're seeing a progressive migration of quakes towards the north here um, away from the little lake fault zone that the geologists are talk talking about um, you know this I get it okay the little lake fault zone is a it's kind of like a zone of many different small fault fractures in the earth and uh, it's somehow capable of producing a 7.1 earthquake um, I don't think they knew that but uh, it's a it's a big deal it, it produced one and it showed us that it can so what we're seeing right now going away from the main area down here right you see Ridgecrest hopefully you guys can see the Ridgecrest area um, down there in the dark uh, dark light or dark uh, color where a couple of these red circles are located more recent quakes once we go up here towards the north you can see a similar or a, a, like a line of activity right and this is just one day if I were to include the last few days you would see a solid line of earthquake activity extending well north up here towards well Coso volcanic field right I don't think that we have to worry about the Colso volcanic field. I don't believe it's anything volcanic related. Um, I just don't. I'm looking at the, quite a few of the depths of the of the earthquakes um, and the projection and the migration that these quakes are taking. It just does not appear to be volcanic. Um, it's very possible that it could trigger something volcanic with all this activity, but what my main concern is is we're looking at a fault system we're getting into a totally different new fault system up here right separate from the little lake fault system now this fault system right here is called the owens valley fault zone okay 1872 rupture section okay if you caught my earlier video today you heard me talk about a little bit but it's pretty important that i bring this up again because we're seeing uh, an increase in magnitude, an increase in multitude working its way further up north towards this fault section, okay? We're looking at a scale right now of about three, oh, I'm 
about three miles here and on my side the very that very red crate the see the red red circle right here is what I'm trying to say <laughs> is a pretty recent quake okay now take a look at where this fault section is up here it is very close to the Owens Valley fault section I know there's others around here um, I really haven't even looked into those but it's very possible that uh, those could be somewhat affected as well but what I'm worried about is this fault system right here the Owens Valley fault okay it's very capable of producing a 7.0 greater or, or greater magnitude earthquake here um, 1872 a 7.4 to 7.9 earthquake took place on these specific fault sections extending up here to where the uh, um, the window the little uh, window that says the Owens Valley fault zone all the way up to the north here up to up towards this city right here called Lone Pine California now a significant earthquake on that fault system would definitely do some tremendous damage out there in the Lone Pine area um, if if this progression of migration of earthquakes extends into this region um, but on the scale once I say we're within about four miles of act of uh, yeah about four miles from the southern part of this Owens fault zone and it, it's really not that far because we've seen a, uh, a definite forward migration of quakes here folks I mean I kind of want to go back a little bit I don't want my computer to freeze up like it did last night but I'm gonna go uh, let's go ahead last seven days 4.5 and above so there's not going to be a lot of activity um, uh, maybe we can do seven days 2.5 and above should we do that uh, there's gonna be a lot of activity on here I just hope it doesn't freeze up give it a second here folks there we go it didn't freeze up so we're looking at uh, quite a bit of significant earthquake activity and that line is more distinguishable much much more distinguishable um, and you can see like a little uh, I'm not getting this thing to move so that's kind of scary I think this thing might be freezing up a little bit but um you can see a little break in activity um, east of the Little Lake area and then it ramp up really uh, really good over today with a couple mid fours and most recently a, a 4.1 as well well to the north well into the Coso Range volcanic field and even closer to the um, that fault system that I just discussed there we go it looks like it's moving a little bit here still um, yeah my computer is not doing too well with all those uh, earthquakes on the globe um, so anyway folks we're looking at a, uh, a progressive migration I mean I, I don't know what other words to say other than we need to keep an eye on this on this forward progress that's going on here this rupture um, of these quakes extending almost into the Owens Valley fault zone how much stress has built up since 1872 I don't know um, but it's it's continuing it's not anywhere near the epicenter of the earthquake activity um, the scale I'm at right now is still what are we at here yeah about three miles um, all this new activity is about oh 25 to 30 miles away from the probably a little bit more yeah probably a little bit more uh, further away from the epicenter of that 7.1 and the 6.4 region so we're getting away from that little lake fracture zone that they're talking about where all those earthquakes are showing up in a line and now we're seeing um, further release of pressure up north folks I mean it's just you know I, I don't like to fear monger but I think what I think is gonna happen is we're gonna continue to see this migration um, and possibly see a 6.0 um, north of here pretty soon.
just today we've always we've already seen quite a few fours pop up um, like I say back-to-back -back fours earlier this afternoon I want to show a different map here uh, let's see here you can see the seismographs going crazy still this thing ain't letting up anytime soon uh, is this the map I need to show okay let me go ahead and refresh this just to make sure we have the most recent uh, page here okay still quite a bit <laughs> definitely a lot let me tell you so this is still somewhat of an overview of the area just a little bit different type of uh, graphs of earthquakes you know they're kind of square instead of a circle um, 9,444 earthquakes folks we're closing in on 10,000 earthquakes since the 6.4 earthquake struck down here near the Ridgecrest area uh, a few days ago but what worries me is the increase in magnitudes the increase in multitude of earthquakes that's taken place towards the north Further rupture of the Earth's surface within that zone is very possible over the next couple days. I wouldn't doubt it if we happen to see something tomorrow, maybe tonight. Um, I don't, I don't predict earthquakes, but I'm looking at factual information here that's coming from the USGS itself. I mean, there's, it's not hard to point out, it's not hard to see that there's a further rupture going up towards the other fault zone. But what's going to happen when it reaches the other fault zone? Well, depending on how much pressure is built up over, well, since 1872, I'm sure there's a lot. Um, do I think I'll see, do, do I think we'll see a 7.9 on that fault system? I really don't think we'll, we will. But I do believe we're going to see some larger earthquake than what we've been seeing over the past couple days um, and then we'll go from there um, because these the swarm this this earthquake migration is not stopping it's getting stronger I've seen it with my own eyes we've watched the graphs all day on the live stream um, yeah it's it's uh, it's it's continuing folks Uh, let's see here real quick hold on a second here that's not what I wanted that's okay. well shoot I was going to show um let me try this real quick here okay that's not what I wanted anyway this uh let me see if I can change those up a little bit here, a little bit different background. I had to include a new source code into the uh, browser here. So that might work a little bit, there we go. Um, so there's a little bit of information about the, uh, what's it, the Lone Pine earthquake there back in 1872, looks like March 26, 1872 is when that took place there. Um, a very very long time ago but it talks a little bit about uh, the experience that happened um, and the, uh, the the strength that this thing produced the the magnitude that it produced uh, it was definitely no joke uh, talking here it came after midnight around 2 30 a.m. in the morning and found most people in bed um, Uh, they had an estimate of between 8.2 and 8.6. Uh, the folks did back then. Back then, uh, you know, their their geologists for their time stated that. Um, so very strong shaking, based on the changes of the earth and the damage done. As with other historic quakes, there had been some precurs precursory shaking of the area. Um, Aftershocks continued for several months after slowly subsiding in strength. So it goes on and on, talks a little bit about this earthquake. I don't want to go way out there. Um, but the potential for uh, that region to see another earthquake is very possible. If this rupture continues to migrate to the north to that uh, certain fault zone right there. 
Um, and it's looking more and more likely that that's going to happen. As far as the rest of California, we've been relatively quiet. I mean, not a whole lot of activity up here in the north part of the state. Right now, the uh, like I said, the main area is down there in the south. Ridgecrest area, Tehachapi area. Uh, Northern California, relatively quiet. I haven't really seen too much activity on the San Andreas Fault. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's something we're going to have to watch, folks. It's just, uh, it's kind of like, like a scary movie uh, playing out before our eyes. You know, it's like one one fault line ruptures to another and then it just goes on and on hopefully it doesn't happen that way but you just you never know but uh we're within about three to five well three to four miles of uh seeing this earthquake activity reach the uh, fault system that caused a 7.4 to 7.9 magnitude earthquake back in 1872 that's 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 the facts right there. That's no fear mongering. That's not lying. I'm not lying to you. That's 100% factual information there. So, um, earthquake activity continues very, very strongly right there on the seismographs. Um, although, uh, and I'm going to tell you this right here. This is very interesting here because we're seeing earthquake activity happen on Mammoth Lakes right now. Um, Look at the time right there, right? These earthquakes right here in Mammoth Lakes are occurring before the activity in the Ridgecrest area. So that is very, very interesting and very new. So it's very possible Mammoth Lakes, California, Long Valley Super Volcano, may be seeing some uh, swarming pop up. That's probably not a good thing. I will have to keep a closer eye on that. That's very interesting. Uh, just notice that here within the past few minutes. It's been relatively quiet in Mammoth Lakes. Aside from the uh, aftershocks showing up in the Ridgecrest area on that graph. Um, we haven't really seen any independent earthquake activity in the Mammoth Lakes region. But uh, now we're starting to see that. So we'll... Well, keep a close eye on it, folks. Uh, Long Valley Super Volcano is not an, not an area to mess with. Um, I don't know how long it's been since that uh, since that system blew its top, but it's de definitely nothing we want to see today. Uh, in the meantime, folks, I'm going to cut it uh, cut it short right now. I had one heck of a day, let me tell you. It just never ends. Uh, we do have the live stream going, so please come on over if you're watching the update video. Live video of Tehachapi, California, along with some audio coming in there as well. Have a good night, folks. Please stay uh, prepared out there in Southern California. And uh, we'll chat you guys a little bit later. Peace.